if you're missing lifts in competition, that will come down to a variety of reasons. But most common, embrace that. How do I breathe my stomach? Like, oh, like this. <laughs> Without your chest rising, looks like this. Don't leave your chest rise when you breathe in. Take a little practice. <laughs> right now, sir. Let's see it. Come on, big dog. Yep. You ready? Mine is right. You're looking confident. Let's go. Yep. Okay. Yep. PR lifestyle is more than just hitting a PR on the squat bench or deadlifts. A PR could be going a week without skipping a meal. It's about being the best version of yourself, always improving. Desert Barbell, best powerlifting gym in Dubai with Big Noah. Looking yes. great, by the way. No, bro. <laughs> you look, listen, okay, maybe you like it better when you're shredded, yeah. but you still look huge and in good shape at this size. Trying. I 140? Uh, I'm going down now, like I'm like 135, okay. a little bit less maybe. Coming from a bad period after my prep messed up a little bit. Well, that's the thing, you know, you're having an extreme diet leading to the show, afterwards you want to live life and enjoy food again, right? Yeah, but let's say that I uh, actually ended up not doing my show. Uh, my prep was too extreme. Like I was like eating like 1,500 calories. I was like 50 grams of carbs, zero gram of carbs. And I decided to not compete because you remember when I when, when we went out and I showed you the picture of my chest. Right, right. So I actually have a chest problem because I lost loads of weight and I wanted to see if prepping the muscle would get like attached when I was lean. But it actually ended up, ended up worse. So then I decided to not compete and I decided to take like a few weeks off. I was in Italy. I wasn't, I'm, I'm Italian. I haven't been in Italy like since December. I wanted to eat some pizza and pasta, of course. <laughs> so I decided to take a few weeks off. I enjoyed. But when I came back in Dubai, I was supposed like, to get on my plan and like, start. But I had some issues, some bad stuff happened, and I ended up seeing the food as my source of happiness. Like It was my happy thing during the day. And I ended up literally like, binging for like one entire month. My weight went up, I stopped training, because of course I was hiding myself, didn't want to show myself in the gym. But now I've just decided, even though I'm not excited, like to train i'm still not in the mood like i'm not back 100 percent i stopped everything stopped prepping i just i'm just pushing through it and that is a great way to put it because motivation comes and goes guys long story short what he said motivation comes and goes he doesn't really want to train right now he's not happy with the way things went but he's still in here putting in work that's because you're disciplined yeah you've created that discipline yeah. that habit and the lifestyle yeah. so you're going to be here whether you want to be here or yeah. not there's nothing there's nothing wrong sometimes in like crying over yourself like so i was last month i was crying all the time i'm thinking like oh i'm a failure uh because i keep binging i keep ending up eating there's nothing wrong with that uh everyone we're human so everyone is gonna happen at a certain point the important thing is that you have to like have the strength at a certain point to like stand up and like take your life and have to just be disciplined absolutely the fact that you're today after that yeah. show that you have to just yeah. And our results are talking because now I'm slowly losing weight again. I feel better. My face is less puffy. Because last month my face was. I, I fucking look like a bulldog. <laughs> Adam saw me in the gym. I was like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> but look, his diet was so extreme that I took him out somewhere, I think it was five pounds. And he didn't even have a glass of water. Yeah, do you remember? He <laughs> didn't even have a glass of water. So he was really on it, going to like the moon with the diet. So yeah. it's understandable that you needed a proper binge after that. Yeah. Um, so anyways, today we are in the final phase. I say we, I mean me. I'm in the final phase of my programming. Only just three weeks left till I test my TRT one rep maxes for the first time ever. Uh, I got six sets of two, 
working up to about 90% of my one rep training max, which is 7, 725. So that's basically 300 kg I'll be working with today. Um, and so Noah uh, has nothing in two years. Yeah. So we are not going to push your max today. Okay? Yeah, and I have a knee injury. I trained yeah. legs yesterday, yeah. so perfect. Exactly. You know, maybe what I can do is I can give you some points on half deadlift, okay. like a power lifter, and safely. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So we can use lightweight for that. I need to push lightweight, it up to what do you mean? Like 100 kg. 100? No, bro. Come on, no. <laughs> <laughs> at least your body weight. No, like 130. Yeah. No, more, bro. I want to go at least to 200, at least. <laughs> okay, you did leg injury, knee injury. I have been pulled in two years. We're going to take it slow. Okay. We just trained with someone last week, okay, who didn't uh, do squats with free weights and a long time and he didn't tell us also we didn't mention this in the video he told us after the video that he had an injury from the week before doing hack squats so he injured himself even more he injured himself even more and we were wondering why is he shaking so much on all the squats yeah. well it's because he was injured but he didn't say anything so it's part of a language barrier he didn't speak english we did have Stefani there to translate but guys if you are Feeling like something isn't right, tell someone. They could probably talk out of whatever you're trying to do. Because he was still trying to, after furthering his injury, to do arm wrestling, to do a back work. I'm like, no, bro, go home, see a PT, don't make it worse than it is, you know? So it's understandable, bro. <laughs> if yeah. you had the opportunity to train with you, it's normal, bro. Everyone yeah. would. Everyone would. So it's like, it's a double edged sword training. You're going to train with me, probably push yourself more than you're comfortable pushing yourself. But in the process, maybe get hurt. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I'm guilty of it too. I've trained with people I looked up to in the past. I would do what I'm not supposed to be doing. I'd be on a program, but the program would go out the window because I'm like, no, I'm gonna train and push myself today with this person. Yeah. Who knows when an opportunity may come again. Yeah. So I understand. You know, easier said than done. Anyway, we'll let's get see. to work. Yeah. That's a long <laughs> intro, yep. Or squeeze your glutes, standing nice and tall, let your stomach stretch open. Okay, and just rock back and forth slowly. And as you rock forward, squeeze your glute, let your hip flex stretch open. And then switch to the other side. Just do like five reps. Five rocks back and forth. I heard that click. Oh yeah. There's gonna be a lot more of those before we get to the deadlifts. Yeah. All right, squeeze the glute. So nice and tall. Okay. Then you're gonna go into the frog position here. Okay, same thing here, you're gonna squeeze your glute. Actually, you can put your hands a bit more forward. A bit, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna squeeze your glutes and then rock back. Okay, but well, see how my feet are? Yeah, exactly. But slowly, you wanna feel that stretch in your hips and also your abdomen. Yep, squeeze in the front, squeeze here in the back. Open up your knees a little bit each time. Okay, that's all for there. This is the figure four stretch. Okay, yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. And you don't have to go all the way down if you can't. You can even come up here. Okay, wherever's comfortable. And then, see these, just rock a bit. Slowly, nice and slow, not too fast. Switch sides. <laughs> I swear, when I would do this with my coach, it would be about 30 minutes each time. He has a super, super thorough warm up. But as a result, when you're training with a good coach, you'll never get hurt. It's funny because usually when I used to do heavy deadlifts, yeah. Because there was a part two years ago I was like only training like this, like heavy deadlifts, heavy squats, heavy bench. I thought it was heavy. It wasn't. But <laughs> well, heavy bench to you, right? Huh? Heavy for you. Yeah. At the time. That was it. Yeah. And uh, to, before doing that, the only warm up I would do is like 20 kg side, five reps, then 100, and then I, I would get to my weight. <laughs> that was my warm up. No, man. And if you're watching, a lot of you skip this part, but this is one of the most important aspects of injury prevention making sure your body is primed and ready for the, for the deadlift swipe bench that you're doing. Um, we did a little hamstring stretch there, very little. Uh, next, chest. You, yeah, because see, when you're doing a heavy deadlift, conventional especially, even sumo, your chest is going to contract it. So, it's common for your people's chest to cramp up after the deadlift. And um, you prevent that, you just open up a little bit with a little stretch. You can do it on the floor, or you can just grab anything. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or do how he's doing on the floor works too. I'm not doing it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, actually, on the floor, stomach, hand out, and then. Yeah, exactly. Do it correct? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And then, yeah. One side's probably tighter than the other. That's normal. For me, it's a left. <laughs> So if you've been powerlifting for a while, or bodybuilding and doing heavy squats and deadlifts, a lot of the time you'll experience the pain. I can show the guys on the camera. I know it. If you turn around, okay. you'll feel no homo. Some <laughs> pain around this area. You'll feel almost as if it's running down your leg. Not to be confused with like a sciatic pain, like Adam's doing right now. Yeah. Um, this is a pain caused from squats and deadlifts and not proper warm up. Always obvious. <laughs> <laughs> you always have that like, yeah. kind of like a sharp pain yeah. in that area, right? So to free that up, to open that up and make that go away, you can touch your piriformis, which is this stretch here. You can do this on the floor, as I demonstrated earlier, just like this. And this is stretching that muscle in your glute called the piriformis. Now, I like to do this dynamic stretching pre. I, it's recommended to do static after, but I never do static stretching. It just takes too much time. I think it's unnecessary. Um, I've never needed it. I've always been able to hit depth on squat and avoid this pain by just doing a few five to ten minute stretch as such. And I've been doing this last ten years, no issue. So, before and after? Only before. Only before. It's recommended after. I've never needed it. It's based on the individual. Um, if you want that extra mobility, but my PTO has told me that you're training your body and packing to be a spring. And by doing static stretching, you are reducing the efficiency of that spring. They're losing that elasticity um, when you're doing squat and stellar. So you want to be a bit stiff, actually. Oh, really? Uh, but not too stiff, there's a balance. For powerlifting, or you think also for bodybuilding? For powerlifting. Okay. For bodybuilding, I think it's more important that you are um, getting that stretch afterwards so the muscle can grow. Uh, but for powerlifting, it will help to be stiff. But not too stiff where you, you, know, you can't even touch your toes or you got pain in your back because you just feel like a robot or so damn. So, some dynamic touching like I did before, five, ten minutes. It's more than enough. Let's go. Get it. I won't make this tutorial too complicated. You know how to deadlift ready. Uh, I just want to give a few pointers for those watching. Yes. So basically, you're going to walk up to the bar, roughly shoulder width, and you can use these lines to identify where your feet should go so you can have the same exact setup every time. Have the bar roughly a couple inches below the middle of your foot. So the middle of my foot would be somewhere around here, a couple inches below would be right here, where you see this strap is. And I like to take my first big breath here at the top. When you do it hunched over, it's just more difficult, okay? To breathe down here is harder than breathing from up here. Okay, so you breathe before you start. Exactly. So right before I'm ready to pull and get in position, I breathe in my abdominum, I breathe in my stomach, Uh, and you want to make the setup the same, ex the same every single time, no matter how much weight you're lifting, but also quick and efficient. So when you see me pulling my best PRs, it's very quick. Big and big, yeah, exactly. Because you also don't want any time to psych yourself out. When you're getting up the big numbers, singles and triples. I always say they are focused. I think about all the people that insulted me, <laughs> all the girls that rejected me. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get angry first. You need to go to a dark place, yeah. huh? You know, it used to be like that for me as well, but then I ran out of dark places. <laughs> the dark places weren't so dark anymore. I'm like, yeah, like, now that I think about it, it wasn't so bad. My life wasn't that hard. So I ended up uh, <laughs> just having to focus on the execution of the lift. What that means is just focusing on nothing else. But okay, feet here, big breath, left hand first, right hand, pull. Right? That's all I'm thinking about. So, Last next step, I have to breathe it in. Belly, brace, you hold that. Start to move with the hips. Catch your abs while doing it. Yeah, that's really important. That'll help you get that spring off the bottom. So you breathe in the belly and while pushing your stomach out. Brace. And then reach down for the bar with the hips. Okay, not with the knee, like this. It looks like this. Too much about 
the tutorial. And the legs are, like this are, are good, right? Or more? Okay. For you, that looks comfortable. Um, you could go wider, like shoulder width. And so you want to go roughly about here. Think about the bar being at the middle of your foot, a bit behind the middle of your foot, like about here. You mean with my hands? With the bar? Sorry? With the bar. See where the bar is? It's making a line, like, the, like a little bit beneath the middle of your foot. If this is the middle, it should be about here. So that when you go all the way down, just, when you go all the way down, your shin should just lightly touch the bar. Okay. Yeah. Like this? So I'm going to stand up again, without the weight. You stand straight up. Okay, I want you to start reaching for the bar with the hips. Yeah, more hip. So your hip position now is too high. What that means is that you're going to be using mostly your back to pull, which is very dangerous for your lower back. So with deadlifts, you want to have most of the load right and leg to break the floor and then we use our back to finish the lift right but the, the back stays pretty yeah, much I always in a, pull everything with my back yeah think of the back for the first half to get to the knee as just like an isometric it's just staying static it's staying statically strong right then when you get to here then you use your back to finish but let me overcomplicate yeah you had it right so just from the hips Push back, push back with the hips, sit more, sit more, lower, lower. Ah, oh, that's the maximum I can get. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ashamed. It's all good. So we work with what you can do right now. Um, that's why it's important to do those little bit of touch with free. Otherwise, you'll end up getting to the bar and it'll just be all back. Because I'm too stiff, right? That's it, what you're I'm too stiff. You want to still be stiff for powerlifting. It does help to have a tight spring, but not too stiff. You're too stiff right now. So, once again, hips all the way back, and I'll tell you when to stop. But reach for the bar as you do. Bit more back, bit more back, sit a bit lower. And this? How's that feel? Good. Is it okay? Yeah. Can you get your... It's weird though. Never, never did it like this. <laughs> Can you get your shit a bit close to the bar? Like this? Oh, my body. Yeah. yeah. Only in the bottom position. Yeah. Okay. First word. Never did it. Like we'll do it a couple time. more times like that, yeah. actually. Yeah, let's try getting into position again. And as you're descending, as you're reaching for the bar, okay, just keep pushing your hips back. Okay? Hips, yeah. Not the knees, but the hips. All from the hip. More hip, more from the hip. Keep going back. But don't let all of your weight get on the back of your foot. Try and keep the weight in the center of your foot. Now that looks good right there. That looks great. That looks good. That looks good. It feels different also when I raise it. If, what, do you, what do you mean? It feels different when I raise it. We raise usually, the bar. Like when I raise the bar. Because usually I feel it for all in my back. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pulling like this. With my back, not with my legs. Yeah, see if you were to pull more with your legs, it would have prevented an injury. You haven't had injury, injuries in your back, right? No, uh, only lower back, always pain. Yeah, see, that will prevent that. Yeah. If you're pulling too much as you are, I can see straight away. If you're pulling all back like this, you're going to just have all that load in your lower back. So you do want to pull with your legs from the floor. Explosive. And you can increase the speed as the technique gets more comfortable. But that last rep we did was perfect. It looked perfect. Sit back with the hips. Yeah. But hold on. See that? See when your toes come up like that? Yeah. That means too much of your weight is on the heel. That means you're sitting back a bit too far. So I just want you to think about starting the movement to descend with the hips but while keeping the balance of your body on the middle of your foot so you don't end up doing that. Okay, so from the hip and then keep your balance here. Yeah, keep 
reach for the bar. Yep, keep the balance here. A bit lower, yep. That right there. Yeah. Yes, nice. It was good. Perfect. Yeah. We want to get the bar a bit closer to your body. So think of it like it's harder to develop from here, imagine, than it is from here. The closer the bar is to your body, the easier it is to lift it. So right now, you're pulling from here. We want to get you to pull from here. Okay? We're working on it. Let me do my quick set. Yeah, one rep warming up. As I get later in my programming, which I'm at right now, I'm in the final phase called the peaking phase, it's just singles, doubles, and triples. How many times a week do you do that? Oh, just once a week. Once a week? I'm squat also. Once a week also. I'm bench also a week. Yeah. Are you still training for the building style? After, afterwards, I would. Yeah. Oh, you, you still do? I, oh, sorry. I, let me. <laughs> Not during the peaking phase. Okay. So during the last four weeks of training, it's a 12 week cycle. The first eight weeks, I am doing bodybuilding after squat and cellar. But for the final phase, the peaking phase, there's no bodybuilding. Movement. So now you're going to train three times a week, Victor? Yeah. Okay. Three times a week, maximum recovery. Um, all my energy and time is focused on the squat and cellar, leading into my one and maximum time. So during this final few weeks, I should feel really strong, really explosive, really confident. So when I get to a competition day, in about a month, I'm like, okay, I can't wait. I'm ready. Are you hyped? Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Old memories. Exactly. Without the special sauce, so this will be extra fun. <laughs> There'll be something different. There'll be something different. I was saying if it is for today, bro. Don't <laughs> say it. Come on. Yeah, get a bit close to the bar. Yeah, that's good. For you, that's good. More from the hip. Hold on. Try to set up again. Set up again. More from the hip. Okay. And remember, mid foot for the balance. From here. Sit lower. Sit lower. Yep. Okay. You can pull from here. That's good. That's good. Nice. Nice. What we want to hear. Lightweight, baby. Let's <laughs> go. Come on. Let's go. Santa Claus. <laughs> it's Christmas time. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was good. Three slaps. Nice. What was that? 300? I, I said I think that he could get 300 in My a short period. My max in the past was like, I don't know if 250, 260 with Mike Tarsten. We're doing like a challenge. Oh, you need to get 300. You have to train. You're tall. You're 135 kg. Easy. You have to do that. It's just a matter if you want it or not. It's too dangerous. If you're not doing it properly, yeah. But I mean, I've been pulling 10 years, never had a bag of I had a small one that took like two weeks to recover. It's my fault. Like, I never did all these warm ups and stuff. Yeah. Try this. Sorry? Okay. Well, how do you feel? Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. No comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> feel great. Mm. It's easy. You actually feel great though. Yeah. I mean, it look, looks easy. You're not shaking anything, so. <laughs> it don't tell if you're fine. Bro, you beat no up, bro. Yes, sir. That's right. Big no up, don't quit. Let's do it never, bro. Just tell me if the technique is correct. Okay. Remember, before you pull, brace here. Now protect your back. That's protecting your lower back, okay? I need to breathe in. Not in your chest, in your stomach. 
So as you breathe, let this expand. Breathe here and let it expand out. Embrace that. How do I breathe in my stomach? Like, oh, like this. <laughs> Without your chest rising, looks like this. Don't let your chest rise when you breathe in. Take a little practice. <laughs> I'm 22 and I don't know how to breathe. <laughs> like this? Yeah, just like that. And brace. Hold that. Brace it. Yeah, perfect. Yes, good. Brace hard. Brace nice and hard. And pull. Yes, beautiful. That was great. That was, beautiful. That was really good. Really good. Everything good? Yeah. And you did just, legs yesterday. It was the hair. I was holding the air inside. I didn't breathe out. I was supposed to breathe out? No, no. It was good you held it. Okay. Because that intra-abdominal pressure will give you a spring off Should the I bottom. Heard, let me do my head. <laughs> yeah, that's why I probably look like... When it, <laughs> that's why we look like blowfish in the middle of a lift. Because we're holding in our air. It was light. It was good. Yeah. It was quick. Yeah. Uh, when you breathe here and brace, you're getting a spring off the bottom. Off any lift. You'll get that spring. It could be anything, even a machine, a dumbbell curl, anything. It'll give you more strength. That's warm up for you. Yes, sir. Let's go, right. bro. Easy way, bro. Easy way. Come on. Fast, quick, bro. Quick, bro. Easy, bro. Come on. Let's go. Come on, Larry. Easy. Yes. <laughs> Our new model. <laughs> Supporting the bros. That's right. Come on. Yes. Yes. Big brace. Yeah, big brace. Yes. It's Trump. I like the big brace. Well, I'm service. shocked actually. Wait, <laughs> what are you doing? Double overhand? Yeah. Both are over. Yeah. Oh, that would explain why. Yeah. <laughs> why? So, real quick, if you're yeah. doing double over without the hook grip, which means, if you know what hook grip is, you know what I'm talking about. If you're doing just regular double overhand like this, you won't be able to pull nearly as much because the bar is rolling in your hands. So, to yeah, stop. falling down like this. Exactly. To stop the bar from rolling, you do mix grip. Oh. So, you just one hand, pick any. And keep it the same way. One hand over, one hand under. Shall I try again? Yeah. Like yeah. Hang on now. But make sure you keep the other hand straight. So, like this. Yeah, but make sure you keep that hand straight. This one needs to be straight. Just keep it straight, you're good. I've never popped my biceps, you're good. Ten years. Never. 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 Well, well, now we're still over. That was that was that was. Huh? Yeah, make sure you're centered. Yeah, actually, you know, you're, yeah, you're not centered. Yeah, see the lines? Okay. Yeah, use these to know when you're okay, yeah. Okay. Let's go, bro. 200 kg today. You can do mixed grip. I say that. I don't need them. But many people struggle with the deadlift because maybe they have small fingers, small hands, and a lot of people drop the deadlifts because you just can't hold on. So you can also do hook grip, which is painful. But we know this guy called Jamal. You can do 450 kg like this. No you, straps. You need to grip this on the bar. It's like you take your hand, put the thumb under, see this? Right, and you right press like it. This. And exactly, hold it like oh, that. The pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he rips it frequently here. And it's gross, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Larry! Let's go! Same weight, two reps. Oh really, 240 game? Yeah. Okay. Two reps and then we'll increase a little bit, 10 okay. kg. Uh, I want to do 365. Okay. But we'll see. And before your PR was 420 something. Yeah, for three. Three reps? <laughs> yeah. But that was, with, that was with a Delo suit and straps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so my best with no straps is 410. No straps. 
drive, no suit. But don't rush it, and then you'll get soft as okay. But quick as you can, quick as you That's if your first time doing this technique, don't rush it. It's two reps. <laughs> yes, sir. That's cool. Easy reps. Yes, no problem. No problem at all. Let's go. Yes. That's good. Big brace. Yes. Okay, good. That means you're embracing the problem. Yeah. Yeah. When you see the little rubber duckies going around, I mean you're embracing the It's good. The technique was correct. Well, you changed it, you notice. You took a lot of time hesitating at the bottom. So you were a bit nervous. Yeah, of course. I can see it. Of course. <laughs> and when you're spending that time down here thinking about whether you can do it or not, yes. your lower back's getting pumped. So if you see when I say take your breath at the top, it's because I want to have minimal pump in my back. I don't want to spend any time sitting down here. So when I start descending, when I start the eccentric, I pull as quickly as I can. Because I don't want to spend any time down here thinking about if I can do it or not. Maybe I'll get hurt, maybe I won't. You'll, you'll psych yourself out. Yeah. More confidence. Yeah, exactly. More confidence, guys. That's right. <laughs> Basically, don't be scared. Challenging a little bit. That's all a little slow down. I want you to do this set again. With this weight? Not with this weight. <laughs> with the uh, 240. The previous 240, weight. Yeah. Okay. And I want you to be more confident this time. Okay. We did doing axe squats. That's right. The video we did doing axe squats. No yeah. axe squats. Uh, fuck, fuck, it's almost two years ago. Mm. Time flies. It really did. It's crazy. <laughs> I was so much stronger. Back then. I think my peak strength was like when I was like 18, 19. I was squatting like 200 kg, 10 reps. Oh. I was like super strong. Because I, I had no injuries. I, I, was, I wasn't scared of getting injuries. You know when you start training, you're like, you don't, you don't care about anything. You just go. Now I'm like scared. If I want to go heavy I'm thinking like, fuck, am I going to hurt my knees? Am I going to hurt my back? Am I gonna... Before, like, you just don't care. Yeah. You have to be safer as you get older. Yeah. More cautious. Yeah. You still lift heavy though. You just need to have more TLC with like the warm ups and the technique. There's no room for error. Yeah, no way. There's no room for error. No risk in it. But you see, I twisted your mind. You said, oh, today you're going to do 140. <laughs> We're only 100 kg more. <laughs> only like three more booze each side than what I wanted him to do. <laughs> yes. There it is. Oh yeah. That's right. Nice. Oh! <laughs> that was the best set easily. Yeah, that was really light. That was definitely better than the first set. 100%. Well, the third set you already did, right? That was your third set. That was really light. That was great. Like really light. <laughs> Let's go. Be smart, bro. That's what we do. Let's go. The heaviest I'll go in training probably be around 320, 330. So, I mean, of course, I've done 365 before, but with the super. Yeah, it's different. Very different. Yeah. There's night and day difference. How do you feel? I feel good, but of course, weaker. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe like 10%, or 10 to 15%. But you were strong back in the days, like when you were in that. Well, I was in 90 very long. I was, oh, really? I was 17 when I hopped on. But since how long were you training? From 17, two years. I was strong, but I mean. <laughs> you don't remember, you weren't doing like crazy things. Like no, like 180 kg deadlift, you know, nothing. Okay. But I didn't give myself enough time to see where my limit would be, uh, naturally. Yeah. 
how, when you went off, you never tried like heavy lifts? No, because I would back down from everything. I would intentionally not lift heavy because I knew I wasn't on anything. I didn't want to get hurt. I had no intention. I didn't care when my lifts were off. I was like, I'm always going to be on. Don't think it's more psychological? Uh, it is. Uh, and I've gotten over that part now being three months off, or TRT. Um, but I've accepted now, like, this is sustainable. This is the path I'm going to be on. I don't need extra shit. I've already done what I wanted to do. I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. So now I want something I can keep on doing while it's healthy. I can do TRT forever, and it'll still be healthy. So whatever I get from this meat, I hope to grow from it. I'm very curious to see what happens after that. Will I just go get weaker and smaller, or will I be able to build from it? It's crazy how you look still. Yeah, I haven't lost much in size in five PG. I look more or less the same. Just a bit. Do you feel like I you know. need to eat more, eat more healthy? That too, yeah. There's less room for error. You know, before I could eat burgers, whatever, every day, if I wanted, and still be lean. But when you're on less, you can't get away with it. You have to be more dialed in. You have to, you have to be healthy. There's no room for error or cheating. So no cheat meals. I do have cheat meals like once, twice a week. It's not like <laughs> once, once or twice. Once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> One to work twice. Alright. Let's go, bro. Easy. Come on! Push! One! Two! Let's go! Yes. Feels heavier. Yeah. You know? Uh, but it's suspected. But like the speed was perfect. So. Yeah, feels fine. Fuck. Feels fine. <laughs> Two nights is so so quick. What's <laughs> that? Two nights is so quick. You know, I did a video on my like on my Instagram where I was doing like I don't know if you saw it, like 140, 15 reps, and then I did like 200 reps, and everyone's commenting like, oh, but you need to do the reps slow and stuff like this. That's why I even posted in my story actually one of your videos and like, what the fucking Larry Wheels are we just, It's crazy. Like, I think the most like how do you say it in English? The thing that catches your eyes most is like how explosive you can be with weight. That means that you actually feel it really light. Because if I do 140 like this, and I, but I do them like this, like that 140 kg is nothing, like it's, it's light. Yes, and that's the whole method behind strength training, to be explosive. Yeah. You're using different muscle fibers. When you're doing bodybuilding, you need that time and attention to squeeze the muscle yeah. throughout the rep. Oh, with strength training. Yeah. I was trying to PR. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You're not, you don't care if your bicep isn't getting as pumped or yeah. whatever. You, like, whatever, who cares? You just want to get stronger. Yeah. So it's about moving the weight from point A to point B. Yeah. Right, it's a totally different priority. That's why even though I can lift 340 kg, some bodybuilders twice as big as me can't. But that's because we have different priorities. You know? Powerlifters generally look night and day different from bodybuilders. But we're both in the gym, killing ourselves, lifting weight, but we're doing it very differently. You're actually one of the few that's like, probably but still like aesthetics. Yeah, and that's due to genetics, but if I were to focus on bodybuilding, I would have a more bodybuilder-like physique. Yeah, I did for a short period, and I and did you were that different? I was rounder muscles, uh, mostly just rounder muscles, yeah, and things were a bit thicker, I was a bit more proportionate. I remember my quads grew like two inches in diameter in like two months, just from hitting legs differently. Tell me the secret, bro. <laughs> I need these cheeky legs. No, your legs are good, bro, don't worry about it. You're tall, so yeah, yeah. yeah it works out for you. So what should I do, what do you think? 250 to 60 to 40 again? Um, I think just do one more set. Okay. So I've been acclimated to this amount, this, to this amount of volume. Okay. Uh, but you have it. So don't do too much volume. Your body's not ready for it right now. I say just one more set and go up just 10 kg. It's always going to be like an achievement because my PR was 250. Yeah. So if I can do two reps to 250 again now, it means I'm good. Yeah, that'd be great. 250, well you did 250 in the last one, right? Or do 240? 240. Yeah, so let's go 250. Do two reps with that. And that'd be great. You haven't done it in two years. With a knee injury, like yesterday. Yes, bro! <laughs> no excuses here! It's looking good for you, bro. Yes. It's looking good. <laughs> let's go. When I was two weeks out from my competition bodybuilding, I was hitting PRs. But that's because I wasn't training where I should have been training. Yes. Yeah. That is not what you should be doing two weeks out. It was fun. <laughs> And I did it because that's who I am as Larry Wood, that's my yeah, identity. The thing yeah. is, even the strength, where do you fucking find the strength at two weeks out? That's because I was still lifting heavy the whole time. And I was on low carbs, but I was on enough carbs, and especially enough compounds, that it didn't matter if I was only 100 grams of carbs a day. When you're on 
X, Y, and Z from the kitchen, you can still push through and hit huge PRs if you're on enough sauce. And if you're still training heavy as I was, but I shouldn't have been. Like that's not, I would have been a much better bodybuilder if I had not been doing one rep maxes. I mean, there was no reason to be doing that at that time. I mean, it was great. I built some clout from it, but <laughs> as a bodybuilder, it was really stupid. Like there was no reason for me to be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And risky before competition. Exactly, it was risky as well. Very risky and stupid. For bodybuilding, which was what my, what my goal was, it was just, yeah. Made no sense. Even during the prep, Adam came to me. I was like, "Oh, let's have rest." I said, "No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it." Before doing my yeah, prep. that's smart. See, yeah. you're smart. I was tempted, but then I had to wait just a few more weeks and I crushed him at the hours. He did. He did. I want to tell you why you were depleted. He did. Yes, yes exactly. I, I got to do it then. I Let's work. It's quite season, bro. Come on, let's go, Larry. Push one, easy. Let's go, bro. Come on, Noah. Nervous. You got oh, this. Go. You got this, bro. If you're nervous, take a step back and come back. Yeah. Get your mind right. Don't be nervous before getting up to the bottom. Yeah. Okay? You're thinking too much. Yeah, there it is. I see it. I see it coming out, though. I see it. Big Noah coming out. Yes, bro. Big Noah's ready. Yes, bro. There it is. I see the aggression now. Now it's the confidence. Come on, boss. There it is. Yes. Pull. Perfect. Yes. Oh, you're good, you're good. One more rep. Midfoot balance, yep. Yeah. There it is. Lost balance. I saw. Fuck. You're a bit too much on here, but whatever. Yeah. You're good. Be on. Be on. Yes. You're good. Awesome, man. You're good. That was great. <laughs> yes, sir. Very good. Now you can't get the belt off. <laughs> Very good. Oh, I, I got man. scared and lost balance. Yeah. <laughs> So good. That was a good. I was great. I could tell. See, so that's exactly what happens when too much of your weight is being on the back of your foot and your heel. Um, that's that'll happen every time. That's what I was saying. Try and keep your balance of your body in the middle of your foot, so you don't go too far forward or too far back. Regardless, fuck that right now. You hit PR. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> well done. And two years, no pulling, knee injury, leg day yesterday. Still got it done. <laughs> the first time I could tell you were nervous. Yeah. You walked up to the bar. You didn't look confident. <laughs> you definitely look confident. I could see it in your face. Yeah. You're thinking too much about it. You're thinking too much about if you can get it or not, or if you're going to get hurt. Right? So that's why I say the best plane of thought for you to have is execution. Just worry about, okay, feet here, hands here, braces, and then I'll take your mind off any negatives. You only want positive thoughts, my positive, I mean execution, that's it. And that, you know, from that transition from getting in that dark place before to focusing only on execution will be a mix from a good lift here to a great lift here. But then every time you set up, it'll look exactly the same. Because you'll just be so dialed in. I'll be all thinking about, okay, I know exactly what I have to do, I'm gonna focus only on that. And before we get up to the bar though, you can get yourself hyped up. That's why my videos, you'll see me in the back, over here, pacing, getting the adrenaline going, working myself up. Then when I feel ready, get up to the bar, execution. But once I get up to the bar, the only thing that matters is executing properly. That's all I'm thinking about. But out here, I'm thinking about getting my right. Let's go. Come on, bro! Lift it, bro! Let's go! Easy! Push! One! Push! Four! Yes, there we go! Come on! Easy. How's your hand? Hands are okay. See, this bar has been thoroughly worn in. Yeah. What that means is the knurling isn't as sharp. When the knurling is sharp, it'll tear your shit up. So we have a fresh text, uh, text Della bar over at Benos. And with half this much weight, my calves is peeling off. The knurling is razor sharp. If you are using a deadlift bar, a text deadlift bar specifically, try and file that shit down. Because you're just gonna be going through prep, ripping calluses left and right. And all it takes for you to miss a lift, or even touch yourself back two, three weeks in training is a torn callus. Uh, so prevention is better than cure. 
you don't want to grab the bar and say, oh, that's sharp. If you think that to yourself, shave it down. This is perfect right here. If you're missing lifts in competition, that will come down to a variety of reasons. But most common, and the unfortunate fact for many, is that you don't have access to powerlifting specific equipment. What that means is powerlifting specific squat, bench, and delt bars. Most commercial gyms don't have it because most commercial gyms don't have powerlifters. So what this means is that you're going to be training on what is likely to be a cheap, off-brand, generic bar with terrible knurling, flimsy, not the proper dimensions, or flex is the same as a competition standard barbell. And then you're gonna to get to the competition and it's gonna feel different from how it felt in your commercial gym. Not only are the bars in most commercial gyms different from how it is in competition, but also the plates. See, these Elico plates are calibrated. They weigh exactly what they say they weigh. In most commercial gyms, they have these big rubber 45 pound or 20 kg plates, depending on where you are. And nearly every time, they weigh either one pound more or one pound less, even sometimes a whole kg more or less. Yeah. And then you add all that up with five, six, seven plates on each side. And then you don't know what you're lifting. So sometimes you go to the gym like, oh, I feel good today. That could be because maybe using the light plates. Yeah. <laughs> I put them in yesterday. <laughs> It did, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, if you can, it's always worth, if you're serious about competing, or you signed up already, seek out a gym with the same equipment that you're going to be competing with. Practice how you play, right? So that's why four weeks out, I came here to Desert Barbara. I love Tina Bonos. They have everything I need there, great atmosphere, but they don't have calibrated plates. Calibrated plates are razor thin, as you can tell. And when you're deadlifting, you notice it's mostly on the deadlift, the distribution of the weight is closer in, right? And there's less flex in the bar. So you are actually lifting the weight a longer range of motion because there's less flex before all the weight breaks the floor than you would with 20 kg plates filling up the entirety of the sleeve of the bar. So all these little things matter, right? The closest you can get to competition environment in training the more confident you'll be when you show up. Everything will feel very familiar. You have been training on the exact same plates, the same barbells, it's all gonna feel the same. I've happened to me many times, I'll be training with non-competition standard equipment, get to the competition, and then I have a mind fuck that oh, this feels so heavy now, it feels so weird, it just won't feel right. Like, this is almost like an entirely new movement. Yeah, yesterday I went, uh... I write down on my notes every time how much weight I use. Yeah. So I did like two workouts in the leg press with like the red plates in Venus. Okay. And yesterday I went in the, into the leg area there wasn't. So I put the same plates, but like not, I put the same weight, but with different plates from Venus. Yeah. And it was so much heavier. <laughs> I was like, what, what the fuck is happening? I was supposed to like progress, instead I'm going backwards. I, I came over and said the, bar, the weight is different. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's not possible. Yeah, and even you know the red and white blue plates that the Captain Arch plates Benos has, they're not even the same size. Yeah, they're different, right? They're all different. And you can feel the difference. Yes, they're not even the same size. So, all these things for powerlifting, strength training, make a huge difference. For bodybuilding, it doesn't matter. You know, because you're not even probably concerned how strong you are, anyways. So strength training, these small things make a huge difference on confidence. But we had enough rest, bro. Let's get it. Last set. Yeah. Waking the beast, sir. Waking the beast for me. Right now, sir. Let's see it. Come on, big dog. Yep. You're ready. Mine is right. You're looking confident. Let's go. Yep. Okay. Yep. There we go. Yeah. Let's go. Perfect. Let's go. Come on. Ironically, <laughs> I slipped. <laughs> I lost my balance. That's Let's go. Well done. Uh, well, don't commit the same error two times. Bro. Yeah, I look better than the first set. No, <laughs> no loss of balance whatsoever. Yeah. And it was light. It looked better. It's good. It looked better. Yeah. Really good. It, you know, it's not your two rep max. Yeah, I can do more. You could definitely do yeah, more. Yeah, I feel it. But this is a good weight for you to work with where it's challenging, right? It's stimulating your CNS, which is what stimulates strength growth, 
but also you know, work your technique. Because there's, there's some room for error with this. Yeah. You know? If you were to do your two rep max, it would get sloppy. It's only natural. When you're pulling your absolute max effort, something's gonna break down. You know? It's perfect. It's really good. It's cool. It's been a long time, yeah. You did message me with this with oh, the track. I did. Yeah. Oh, right. DRT is not gonna be your ass, bro. You're a beast, bro. Oh, yeah. You're born for this. Let's go, man. Come on. Come on, Larry. Let's go. This is what you do, bro. This. Born for this. Let's go, beast. Push. What? Come on. Let's go. Two. Yeah. I feel like I might be ready for 360, 365. Come count it, but that will be after a max squat and a max bench. Oh, you have to do two in a row? Yeah, I want to do it all on the same day. Oh, that's okay. going to be harder, right? Exactly. That's why I'm saying 365. Uh, certainly doable. Yeah, for sure. It's doable. Let's see. And if they're light, are you going to try to do more? Yeah. Just going to skip to, skip to your goal? Uh, I mean, it's safe to keep to my goal. I'd be content with that and then building from there. Because now that I'm on TRT, I don't feel any rush. I can take my sweet time. I don't mind if it takes me five years for, to get from 365 to like 375. That's fine. Do you think you're ever gonna get to what you were doing before? Not on TRT, it's just, it's just not possible. I mean, not you want to say impossible, right? We don't know what's possible, but I'd say it's very unlikely. I think if I can even come just within 10%, that's a really good place to be. 10%, of the squat from Stella. Just knock 10% off my best lifts. If I can get 10% of the way there, I think that's a really good place. The world record is 500, right? Yeah. 501, actually. 501, exactly, 501. <laughs> yeah, I was always a far cry from that, yeah. You, you never wanted to try that? I couldn't even get to 450, so 500 is... See, I didn't want to be so big and so unhealthy, borderline heart attack territory, to get 500. It's already been done as, right, as well. You have to get really extremely like, big. Yeah, you have to. Eddie did it at 200. Thor did it at 200. KG. 200 body weight, yeah. Uh, Jamal is doing 500, but sumo. Okay. And he's doing about 50 kg less conventional. Okay. So it's a massive difference. Yeah. And Jamal, arguably, for his body weight, is the best deadlifter ever. How much does he weight? He's like 117, 160. Same as me. 170 kg. Yeah. And he's deadlifting 500. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, very impressive. No suit as well. Eddie and Thor both use a Dell suit. Does he have that much? It'll help you about like 5%. 5, maybe 10%, depending on which suit. No straps. With strap. Uh, with, with strap, 500, yeah. He's done 455 without. Fuck. Yeah. With a hook grip. With a hook grip, yeah. Oh my god. Two reps he's done actually. He's doubled it as well. He's very impressive. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, like, you have to understand what your potential is. And I've used a lot of different compounds. I went to a lot of extremes with dieting uh, and training that I know it would take, if I gave it everything and risked literally death of being hospitalized, it still wouldn't be enough to get a 500 kg conventional deadlift. It's just not gonna happen. I can live with that, I'm okay with that. And I've made my men's, made my peace actually with my on cycle journey. And I'm happy to see what I can do off cycle. So you decided now you're gonna be a TRT for it? Like yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Rather, I get more fulfillment from helping people fulfill mm -hmm. their goals. Yeah. You know, I was a lot of guys on the come up who are trying to break world records, and I've been there, I've done that. I can help them with my experience and my resources get where they wanna be. You know, while still chasing. PRs of myself, but in a much healthier, longevity focused That's way. That's smart because you're 28, right? Yeah. So like you've done everything you wanted to do, and now like exactly. I made my piece. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I don't need to have a 700 pound bench or whatever. Yeah, I don't always push. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's I'm why fine. I made that face. So I was like, oh. I, I made my piece with it. I made my piece. I'm good. I don't need it. You know. Uh, he's so and, close that one time. Uh. You know, it's fine. Like I can live with it. You know. No regrets. I'm more concerned about being healthy and something that's sustainable. When you're on cycle blasting everything in the kitchen cabinet, it's very up and down and you're, there is a price you're paying for that. It's not like you can just take whatever you want, hit PRs, and then there's no price to pay. There is a price. 
and I don't want to pay that price anymore. You know, so even if you're healthy, even if at, the, at the end you're healthy, like I feel like the mental state. Mental state, exactly. Mental state, of course, everything like skin, sleep, mood, yeah. everything is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know, so. So, Big Noah, Big Larry, we're wrapping up today's workout here at Desert Barbell, best powerlifting gym in Dubai. We have just three short weeks left by we, I mean me, and so I get to my mock meet, which will also be done here on calibrated plates and competition grade barbells. So, I will be ready. That's why I'm training here from today moving forward. Generally, I know from experience, I need roughly two to three sessions with calibrated plates and barbells to feel comfortable with it, where it feels like the norm, and I'll be good to go. Uh, my targets would be anything over 700 pound squat, 500 pound bench, or 800 pound deadlift. Like those numbers would be really, really good for me. I, I can be really ecstatic about that and happy with that. Oh, 170 kg body weight. At 117, probably 150. I'm one, might be 115 now. Slowly dropping, slowly. Uh, I have some food poisoning, so I just recovered from that. But yeah, much also much lighter body weight. Than Crazy. I used to be at. So, yeah. If you uh, want to follow Big Noah's journey as he goes on his quest to be aesthetic, yeah. <laughs> link down below, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Let's go, man. Yes, sir. Let's go.